Hi, everybody. Welcome to the How to Build a Social Media Program for Public Schools. I'm Jay Cooper, and I'll be steering the ship for the next half hour or so. This is the Campus Suite Academy Educational Webinar Series, and today's topic is a pressing one, and it's designed for public schools initially. However, it really applies to private schools, charter schools, and there's a lot of crossover material. We do have a dedicated webinar on tap for private schools, and so be on the lookout for that. But we appreciate your time. We'll sure you get a lot out of this, and thanks for joining us. Today's presenters, myself, Jay Cooper. I'm a public relations, former school public relations specialist. I've been working in marketing and advertising, and I'm currently director of the Campus Suite Academy in, in addition to being marketing director of uh, Campus Suite. Also joining us today will be Steve Williams. I'll be handing it over to him. He'll review tools that uh, will help you set up and streamline social media management in your school or district. A quick review of our mission here at the Campus Suite Academy is to share knowledge with educators and to help them stay current and improve outcomes. This is really the Academy is an outgrowth of Campus Suite, which is our division that makes software for, for school websites. And what we're trying to do is support our mission and to improve communications and improve outcomes for schools. A little bit about Campus Suite. We're located in Cincinnati. We've been helping schools for 15 years make the most out of their website. And it's the Academy, again, is our commitment to give back to education. A reminder, stick with us and you'll earn yourself a free social media guide, which we'll make available at the end of the presentation today. And we'll give you the URL for that. And you can download your free guide. It's an ebook that we put together, and it's already uh, becoming uh, a top seller, at least in, in our minds. So who is this webinar for? You're likely either a PR communications manager, a webmaster, maybe an IT director, maybe you're a superintendent or a principal. Whoever you are, uh, we think you'll get a lot out of today's presentation. We're not going to drill down too deep but cover some fundamentals on social media management, and more importantly, give you some specific direction and the tools to get started at your school. So why social media management is important to your school? Well, the social media landscape is changing, and it's a very important way to reinforce your school brand, and you need to start taking a strategic approach to social media management. Secondly, we're going to show you how to put a place in place a social media foundation for your school. And part of that base includes having a mission, some policies, a structure, and a process. It's a strategic sound approach to building a social media foundation. We're going to go over some tips as well for managing your school's social media, how to create and gather content, ways to share it, how to build a following, and obviously the key part of social media is how to plan for interactivity. And then finally, we're going to go over some online tools for how to manage your school's social media. Steve's going to show you how to schedule and share content, monitor what people are saying about it, and show you some really cool tools that will help you. A reminder that social media is, is really just a, one of the spokes in your total communications hub. And we're going to review how to do that today. So why is social media management important for schools? Obviously, you've already realized that it is. But the main reason is it helps you stay in touch with your community. And so much negative publicity surrounds social media in schools. But really, on the positive side, and that's really our, the gist of our message here today, Social media gives you many ways to, to not only communicate, but monitor various segments of your school community and even gauge opinion so you know what's trending and you know what's important so you can translate into that, that into your school's communications program. 
Most importantly, it helps you tell your school's story, uh, whether it's the parents, staff, or the community. You know, you know, right now you're probably posting information on your website or sending out news releases and just hoping that people find that information. But really what social media can do for you is extend the reach. It can do all kinds of things. It can drive traffic to specific parts of your website. It can give you more chances to learn about your audiences, more chances to learn about your school. And so, so they can dig deeper and it gives you that opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue and really tell your school story. Talk about all the great things happening in your school. So social media is important because, well, everybody's doing it. Uh, regardless of the age group, it's all trending upward. Uh, well, not almost, I guess, not almost, uh, excuse me, not everyone's doing it, but almost everyone's doing it. You know, as recently as a couple years ago, we did a, 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 some research. Only 40 school districts nationwide had a social media policy. That's out of 14,000 school districts. Does your school district have a policy? If not, we'll show you how to put one in place real simply. So the growing number of social media users is creating more and better ways to connect to get in front of your audiences. Not every school is doing it right, though. You have uh, levies being passed, uh, fundraising in the private sector. Uh, levies tend to bring out the motivated voters, usually on the, the negative side. But so many of these levy contests are close ones. Uh, there was one just recently, last fall here in, in our town, 17 votes decided whether that levy passed or failed, and it happened to fail. So imagine if you had a social media program in place where you could you know, get, get the voters out, get the, get the positive news out about your school district. So, for example, one just right up the street from us here uses social media to promote issue four, which happened to be their tax levy. They used Facebook and Twitter to show images, very vivid images of school facilities in disrepair. And they tweeted those out on a schedule and, and got the word out that, hey, our grounds and our facilities, our physical plant needs your help. And with the help of social media, they got their tax levy passed. You can also show the softer side of your school. It's not just for pleased of the community necessarily, but Here's one from a Michigan elementary school principal, uh, Ben Gilpin, shows his, a glimpse into his style. He's got a, a blog, his own, his own principal's blog. It can be a blog from the principal, superintendent, teachers, wherever. But, but uh, social media is not just for the hard news. It, it can show the softer side of your school or district. Point is, your school district needs to get out in front of it. Uh, some states are even mandating school boards implement a social media policy. And that's on the surface good, but you want to be able to maintain your own flexibility and discretion to write your own policy. You know, get out in front of it. Start social media now, sooner than later. And don't be at the don't be at the mercy of bureaucrats to determine exactly how you put your social media program together. Social media gives you the opportunity to, to listen to your community. You know, we all know that listening is a key part of the communications loop. What you learn from using social media will be just as great, if not more useful, than, than what you're putting out there. The biggest takeaway, by managing your social media at your school, you'll get closer to parents, staff, students, and really your entire community. It's parent engagement, guaranteed. It's all about the dialogue. Uh, speaking of dialogue, I just want to remind you that uh, in, in engagement, uh, stay tuned at the end of today's webinar. We'll give you directions on how to get a free download of an ebook that we put together on how to start your social media program. So planning for a social media foundation for your school. There's four major elements, mission, structure, policies, and process. First order of business is to plan. Okay, you've got to plan your social media program and to articulate that with a mission. You've got to identify exactly what those goals are. Here's an example of one we put together and information like this. Actually, you can use this one if you'd like. It's in our ebook. 
Share content and create meaningful dialogue with parents, students, staff, and the community to improve communications and support the educational goals of the school. You're connecting to parents, students, staff, and the community. Secondly, make sure you have the people and the social media profiles in place. Who's in charge? Part of the beauty of social media is the capability for virtually anybody to contribute. But there needs to be someone, it's probably going to be a committee at your school, who's in charge. With my background, I'm all for having a senior ranking communications manager manage the process. But whoever it is, they should be passionate and reliable. Someone that's going to manage the day-to-day -day process of social media. Uh, be realistic, though, on expectations of the committee members or if you're the person in charge. You know, share the... Share the burden, if you will. Assign, you can even assign school leaders to write a blog article. Give them several weeks or even months in advance to, to do that, and it takes the burden off of you. Are you going to have multiple social channels for each school, for example? We'd recommend that if you're in a five, seven, multiple school district. You're probably going to want to have a social media channel for each one of those schools. Obviously, a district-wide one as well. The number of profiles that you set up, how you structure your program, all depends on you. You might have, for example, a superintendent might have a profile, a principal, an athletic director, your music director, uh, the drama department. And as Steve will get into later, uh, if you're not going to be committed to managing that profile, you might not want to have one in the first place. So uh, do you have a school blog? If you don't, you need one. All right. Mission in hand. People and structure in place, you need some policies, right? So set a social media policy that reflects your school culture. Okay, you're going to enforce the policies set forth by your school. That'll be part of the social media manager's role. And make sure it's something you can live with and abide by. And there's plenty of guidelines already out there, and we can share those with you as well. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here. Um, and, of course, make sure you run it by your legal and HR departments to make sure uh, you're not violating any current policies or, or laws. you got to get buy-in, so make sure everyone agrees. Here's an example of, of what, an acceptable use policy guideline that you can put right on your website. You capture everybody quickly and simply with an online form. And, again, we've got an example of this in uh, some several examples of AUPs in our social media guide. Part of the policies will address how to set up the account, permissions, posting guidelines, privacy and decency issues, and then responding in social media. All right, mission structure policies in place. What's the process? Very simply, you're going to create content, you're going to share it, and you got to plan for an activity, for interactivity, excuse me. We've got some tips on how to manage your social media. First off, put your team together. First order of business is to get a working group together and make sure there's at least one teacher on it, someone from your IT group, of course. And it's not a, a bad idea to include a student as well. Make sure you've got good representation, as I said before, across your schools and make sure you've got a champion in the process. Always be asking for ideas, okay? Here's an example of a page on a website where you're just soliciting your website viewers for content, a content request form. The crowdsourcing is what really makes social media, can make or break social media. It's a very successful element of social media by getting genuine content generated by the very viewers and readers who are participating. Scheduling your content is critical too. Use a social media content planner. Here's an example of a document created in Google Docs, and Steve will be getting into this in a little bit, but this in conjunction with social media tools enables you to schedule your school's content across the various social media channels. It frequency is very important in the social media world, and having a document like this helps you keep that content out there on a regular basis. Build a following, literally build a following. In email, you can put follow us 
on in your emails and follow us links and in, in your, your emails in prominent places. By building a following, we mean promote. That's what you need to do. You need to promote social media. And don't be bashful about promoting it either. On your website, place follow us buttons on your homepage and other popular pages. You want to encourage sharing, placing links throughout your website, especially on the news and blog pages. And make sure your website is set up to be viewed on mobile devices. You know, the number of people accessing websites on mobile devices, phones, and tablets is continues to increase. Okay. So make sure that you can reach these people on the go. More and more people prefer to get their information and news on their portable devices. So be equipped to handle that. You have to plan for interaction as well. Another tip. In most cases, much of the buzz around social media seems to be on negative content, but make sure your policies address things like direct messaging and forbidden words and make sure you have a plan in place to report incidents. Some more tips. Use hashtags to group subjects together. You might have a, a dance team or a, a levy promotion or a sports booster club. You can use hashtags to have these groupings and they're limitless, really. Choose your hashtag words. They need to be short and clear, but create those and you create little communities out there in social media land. Set up a social media training for staff and parents. Make it part of your orientation even. You can promote uh, teacher pages. You can promote social media in your take-home packets. You got to show parents you're committed to using social media because you want that engagement. Okay. You could even make a short how to video if you want and post it on your school website or put it up on YouTube. And again, don't forget about establishing that acceptable use policy. Your takeaway here is promote social media at every turn throughout your school and your district. You got to cross promote, put it in all your other communications. You might have special events, posters, school programs, conferences. Uh, even some ad specialties, you know, put put your put your uh, Twitter handle and your Facebook page uh, everywhere so people start using it. So your school needs to start using social media because it's the best way to engage. Uh, you, you can create your own media channel. In essence, is what you're doing. Uh, and it can also be used for your own professional staff development by getting your your staff and faculty fired up about better engaging their their parents and and each other really and most importantly it's free it's easy on the budget other than the resources of managing the program there's very little outside costs if any associated with establishing social media okay uh, I'd like to remind you hang in there at the end of today's webinar you'll have an opportunity to download a free ebook and now I'd like to turn it over to Steve Williams, he's the co-founder of Campus Suite, and he's on a mission of helping schools stay current with web technology and communications. He's going to review some of the tools available to monitor, manage, and engage your school community through social media. Steve? Thanks, Jay, for putting that together in a I'm going to be covering the nuts and bolts in terms of some software and how you guys can actually you know, manage this a little more effectively than what you currently are doing. First, we're going to talk about the three areas of uh, software that you can put in place to make it a little easier. We're going to talk about getting in front of your publishing. And what I mean by that is you can actually schedule your post without having to log in and add them to each uh, profile immediately. We're also going to talk about saving time by posting once and pushing a button and having it published to the multiple channels. Last, keeping your ears open to listen to activity and mentions. First, we're going to talk about uh, scheduling, and there are several different software out there. Uh, we like Hootsuite, but there's also Social Sprout and Buffer. The reason we like Hootsuite is they provide a free profile or a free version up to five profiles, so that may work for a lot of the schools out there. 
And it also allows you to schedule post. Uh, you can add one post and uh, click a button and send it to several profiles. And the last thing I like, I'll be talking about is managing private messages. So scheduling post in Hootsuite is very simple. And this can really streamline how you add announcements, especially like on the weekend or perhaps you wanted to post an individual uh, link multiple times during the day. Hootsuite gives you a dashboard that you can add this content real easy. It also shrinks the actual URL for you. Imagine if you're adding something to Twitter, you do not have to use a link shortener. It will automatically do that for you. It also has an auto schedule, which will post the information at the optimal time when you have most, of, most activity of all your uh, followers. You can also add a RSS feed. What that means is if you have like a blog or a news section of your website, a lot of the pro CMS providers provide the ability to have an RSS feed. What that means is real simple syndication. And by adding that URL of the actual RSS feed, your information can be automatically published upon publishing a news or blog article. The next thing Hootsuite does is allow you to manage private messages. <clears throat> and this is really important because this is going to leave a paper trail. It will allow you to empower others to manage these messages. So when we're looking at you know, starting actual social media profiles for a school district, you may get a lot of resistance. And this pulls all the messaging into one place and you can monitor it. So it's, it's very nice uh, to build confidence in terms of the liability of having the social media profiles. The next thing we're going to talk about is mention. And mention allows you to list, listen to all the chatter across the social media uh, profiles and social media in general. Imagine if you wanted to monitor, monitor your school district, individual schools, individuals like the superintendent or principals or teachers or whatever that may be. You can set up all of these keywords and it will notify you upon somebody posting that keyword in Facebook, Twitter, or other social media profiles. You can receive an immediate response via email. You can also set up workflows to notify key people in the event of uh, mention detecting any of these keywords. Another nice feature is it provides a nice little mobile app. It will send you push notifications upon these alerts as well. And you also receive an email, like I mentioned before. Another free service for monitoring activity is Google Alerts. And how it works, it's going to monitor blogs, news, and news articles. So basically, Google will index every page on the internet daily, basically. And upon it recognizes your keyword, it will send you a notification via email. So imagine that a local news station wrote an article about your school district. You can receive a notification you know, once that's published and you know, circulating on the internet for a day or two. It's a really nice feature, and I highly suggest this out of all of them. Last, we're going to talk about you know, having a, a nice website that plays well with social media. And some of the key factors there are going to be responsive design. And that means your website will adapt to mobile devices. As Jay mentioned before, over 50% of the people that are in social media are using a mobile app. Therefore, if content from your website is being shared, you want an optimal experience for that. And that's what a mobile-friendly, responsive website mm -hmm. will provide. In addition to that, it has to be easy to manage and empower people to add content because your website's basically going to serve as a hub to sharing content throughout social media. 
So once again, as Jay mentioned, we are providing a free guide and the URL is campsuite.com slash social dash media. It's 30 pages and it's going to cover everything that we've covered today and provide a lot of links to great resources as well. We're, we're going to leave that up just for a second. If, if we back that up because we've had, uh, we've had people say, Hey, you flash that uh, download too quickly. So it's campusweetcom slash social media. And if you get in a pinch, just, just go to the website and you can navigate to it. Okay. Yes, uh, Steve, we do have some questions here. I like to, uh, this is, this one's from, from Laura, one of our participants. How frequent, frequently should we tweet? That's a very common question, and that is going to be dependent on, uh, you know, what the profile may represent. Is it for a school? Is it for an individual? But we'll use an example of like a school district, and I recommend at least, you know, two to four times a day. The optimal, based on statistics, is six. And the one th takeaway I just want to emphasize is it's very important to tweet multiple times of the same message because because the lifespan of a tweet is like eight minutes. Therefore, if you have an important announcement, you're going to use a product like Hootsuite and schedule that multiple times. And you can schedule the same message, you know, up to 10 times, uh, you know, during the course of a week. So that would be my recommendations. And once again, you know, at least two to four times. All right. Here's one from Zach, a question from Zach. How many profiles should we have in place at our school? Well, if you can't manage one profile effectively and maintain it, I don't recommend having any more over one. And I would start by the planning and determining how you wanted to set it up. And once again, our guide covers that as well. But I would start with the school district, then I'd perhaps trickle that to the individual schools. But I would really focus on the amount of fans and followers you were able to establish for these different profiles. And if you're not really utilizing social media currently, I would start with one. But a rule of thumb is I would start with the school district. I would trickle that down to the schools. Then if you wanted to even go as far as setting up several, uh, you know, profiles, imagine if you have theater club or uh, a sports team, you could actually set up those profiles as well. But that's really on a per case basis and, you know, try to perfect using it and understanding it, putting a lot of things in place before you, you know, build out 10 profiles. Yeah. And that gets back to when you have that team in place, that social media team that's, that's going to be helping you run your program. You have to, you have to identify, you know, who the real champions in the process are going to be. You don't want to force this on anyone and you don't want to create these profiles that aren't going to be maintained and, and filled with content. So, okay. One last question we have time for, uh, how, how do I get buy-in? This is a great question from Megan. How do I get buy-in from the board to implement a social media program? And by buy-in, I'm, I'm thinking she probably is referring to, uh, uh, you know, negative publicity surrounding social media or maybe uh, some return on investment. Steve, you want to address that question? Yes. And the way I like to answer that is first, you need to provide a case uh, to determine how this could be successful. And there's no better way than providing some statistics. As Jay presented before, most adults are using social media. The numbers are, you know, a vast majority. In addition to that, you can also show the opportunity that social media provides in terms of sharing great stories and uh, getting the community support and involved. The next thing is putting together a plan of contingency, contingency which is going to put the people, the software, and the plan in place to ensure you know how to respond in the event of something negative. Because your board and other people are probably focused on the negative aspects of social media. So if you can cover that and show that there is a plan in place, there is a wealth of opportunity there to help 
share great stories, and gain support of the community through social media. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Steve. And uh, we're wrapping up here. And just for participating in today's webinar, we'll be sending out to you a certificate of completion that uh, proves that you haven't been wasting the last uh, half hour, 45 minutes. And so uh, be looking for that. Also like to remind you that the Campus Suite Academy has some upcoming webinars uh, that they should be on the lookout for. Google Apps for Education, E-Rate Funding in your school. There's been drastic changes in E-Rate Funding and be looking out for a presentation on that as well as uh, does your school need a mobile app? Uh, that's another webinar in place. Thanks again for attending. Uh, we uh, encourage you to uh, share the information that you learned from uh, today's webinar. Uh, tweet it out there. Like us on Facebook. Uh, link up with us on LinkedIn. And otherwise, and start using and embracing the social media that can do great things for your school or district. Thanks for attending.